So if you caught my video yesterday talking about this, the head of design, Jerry Hook, who's in, pretty much in charge of all of the live service elements of Halo Infinite, has left 343. And there's been a lot of speculation about this, and he actually responded to it on Twitter. Because myself and many others were like, that's kind of odd that he would just kind of get up and leave. It seemed like he was kind of in it for the long haul, at least from what we've seen on the live streams that he's been on previously, or, more, or also most recently. But he said here, thank you all for the thoughts and well wishes. No, I was not fired or let go. I opted to do one thing that everyone at some point has to do grow their experiences take a risk on yourself push your limits and expand your horizons so this sounds like more like maybe not you know let go or like fired but they let him like walk away kind of thing it sounded like he just kind of wanted to do something else that last tweet sounded like he might have been kind of hinting towards maybe starting up his own dev team or something or joining something else or maybe just taking some time off of work since it seems like he's been around for quite a while in the gaming industry though just hate to see jerry go it seemed like he actually was genuinely listening to community feedback and acting upon it in a relatively fast manner but his departure wasn't the only recent departure that happened this week as well at 343. halo infinite's lead environmental artist also has left to move to to in a job with nvidia which is like dude another person leaving 343 for a different position again like this is you know pretty standard for once the game launches to you know move on to different things you know a lot of people do move around when it comes to different titles and jobs and stuff like that when it comes to your position within the video game industry and maybe since you know hey you know moved on to something else just because like he's been working there for over almost four years now at this point so it kind of would make sense that maybe find something else different to do now i don't know if this really is like a sign of like people jumping ship i'm sure a lot of people are probably getting that impression but i'm sure a lot of us who are watching this video are diehard halo fans so if we had a chance to work on halo we'd probably view it as like a dream job and would never leave right but after about four years of doing the same thing you might kind of think huh maybe there's some other opportunities for me or maybe even better pay Looks like we could have some partner teams joining up with Halo Infinite relatively soon, actually, as they are looking to expand the roster of partner teams, guys, when it comes to the competitive side of things. And saying from here, from Flamesword, who is the head of status quo, saying three new partner teams are being announced in June. So that's really exciting. More options for customization as well, because they most likely will have a bundle within the store, probably around like season three or something like that. And of course, he also put in his team to have a chance to be part of these teams. Now, we haven't heard these any kind of official capacity, but what the next partner team will be or even if they're adding in new partner teams even this year uh i have a feeling if i remember correctly tashi mentioned that the rosters for partner teams will get refreshed with the second season of hcs so in the next year of 2023 it would be really exciting to see some other kind of rosters and organizations get involved with halo uh one in particular i know a lot of people have wanted to see 100 thieves get involved with it nade shot has actually voiced some interest in making a team when the game first launched but only if his team can have a legitimate chance of winning. And it seems like a lot of the talent has been picked up, though with the recent showing of a lot of EU teams and new players at the Kansas City event, I think there's some upcoming stars that could definitely shake things up a bit. And guys, I don't know if I really should talk about this, but hey, it's our first like leaked information we've seen about Halo with the upcoming month of June, which is gonna be the big announcement month for a lot of things, the Xbox Bethesda showcase happening on June 12th. I'll definitely will be covering that in depth on this channel for sure. Hopefully to hear some Halo news which it seems like we might get some obviously this is a super grain of salt but it's kind of like showing that like the times are coming leak season is in the air and stuff like that and our first bit of leaked information about halo is that halo the endless is going to get a teaser apparently with this xbox bethesda showcase now this, this is just a text document that somebody just posted on twitter right uh, but the guy who has who did post this does have a significant following about 8,000 followers so he made a name for himself a little, a little bit on twitter and also a lot of the gameplay and trailer announcements that we have actually do line up with a lot of what we've seen with leaks like the Gears of War collection has been another rumor that's been going around uh, also saying like Starfield, Grounded, Contraband, Forza, you know, Diablo 4, uh, Redfall, and, and Avowed were also correlating with Jess Corden's leaks which Jess Corden whenever he has anything to say about leaks it's definitely something to stop and take a listen at, for sure. This all plays in part of the trademark that Microsoft filed for Halo The Endless back in, I believe it was December, if I remember correctly, yeah, December 7th, so way back then. Obviously, this doesn't exactly mean that, like, yes, they're making Halo The Endless is gonna be the next game. Oftentimes, companies will just kind of grab their trademarks just to make sure that, like, if they do want to follow through with different projects, that they have the name available for them. Uh, be very interesting. Joseph Stane seems to have been hinting at a lot of things when it comes to Halo that we do not know at all. About 
about yet. As stated in this podcast, we're just take a look at Joseph Staten's face when he mentions about something else. Not only trying to run a free to play game, but standing up Forge and campaign co-op and some other things that we're working on. Um, and so this is all that right there. That exact reaction is what I'm talking about. So there's something brewing in the background of Halo Infinite that we just do not know yet. Uh, which I'm assuming will get some kind of announcement this coming June. And of course, if we do get any kind of interesting stuff pop up for us, guys, I'll let you guys know on the channel. This could either be the rumored Battle Royale for Tatanka mode that we've been seeing for Certain Affinity, or it could be Halo of the Endless. We don't know. We won't know until we know. And once I know, I'll let you know. In some other gaming news, it looks like Cyberpunk 2077's first expansion has been completely leaked. Yeah, like the first expansion, the entire dialogue has been leaked in a recent patch to Cyberpunk 2077. This continues on with the woes that I'd say that Cyberpunk has certainly has been feeling for quite some time when it comes to the development of this game. Recently did get a patch which really fixed up a lot of things. A lot of people have been saying that the game has improved a lot. Personally, I haven't dived back into the game. I've been focused so much on Halo Infinite Season 2. I haven't really had a chance to jump back into Cyberpunk. But I remember when the game first launched and my PC could barely run it. And there were the bugs on top of that. I'm just like, man, I'm just going to wait until this game's in a good state. And it seems like it's in a better state right now. Not perfect, but it seems like the first expansion that we're going to get has been completely leaked out by data miners. And you can actually find out the entire story, which is kind of crazy. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you because that's, uh, you know, spoiler alert stuff kind of thing. So if you guys want to check it out, it's on the Internet if you really want to know about Cyberpunk 2077. There is currently a community wide protest against Team Fortress 2. Guys, if you do not know, there's been a big issue going on with the bots within this game and Valve has really not done, well, anything to stop the issue really from happening. So a lot of community members have gotten together and made a peaceful protest is what they call it right here for hopefully to send a message to Valve, like just support your game in some capacity with the hashtag SaveTF2. And on the Team Fortress 2 subreddit, They've earned 27,000 upvotes, which for the Team Fortress 2 community, that's a lot of upvotes. So people are very concerned about this issue about bots being in their game. I can imagine ruining the experience, and it's still a very popular game, guys. I mean, it was released like 10 years ago. And looking at Steam charts, like roughly 100,000 people per day, at least for peak population count, play this game like quite a lot. It's been dipped down a bit because of the bot issue that's recently been going on. But you can see right here, just throughout all of 2020, the spikes here are pretty dang high. And you can see just in previous months right here, just alone, like, yeah, right around 120, 150,000 people playing for peak population for a single day, which is crazy to think that this game, so old, is still so popular. And like not, not really show much on social media, but like, People love this game and they're definitely making their voice heard when it comes to this whole issue of bots and stuff like that, you know, obviously affecting the issue of the game because people love their for Team Fortress 2, man. And it's also been going all over Twitter right here. I'll show you some tweets right here showcasing people like the love that they have for this game rather than so much hate or anything like that against it. Just like the hashtag save TF2 going all around Twitter right now letting people know like, hey, we want to save this game, make it good again, get rid of the damn bots basically. And the peaceful protest as they framed it seems to hopefully get the message across like, hey, do something about it, Valve. But well, if you're new to the channel and missing any content from me recently, check out this place right here. I got a link to all my gaming news and informational videos right there. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you all in the next one. Peace out.